Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. I've been working on a fun new pattern that I've designed and it has cats and we're calling it Cafe Cats. So come on over to the workroom and I'm going to show you how to cut it and sew it and quilt it. Today's quilt is called Cafe Cats because we're going to be using Cafe Facet fabrics. He has so many fun, bold prints. This is an applique pattern, and we're going to be using big cats so we can capture all of the fun print here. Nice, bold prints, and these really need kind of a bold background. So we've got all these bright colors, six here, six more here, and for the backgrounds, we're going to be using these bright grunge fabrics. These make a really good background for the K Facet fabrics. They're bold and they are just nice and colorful. So today's cat, this is the size we're gonna do. It's a nice big cat. So you can print off the download. We'll have the pattern available for you to print off and transfer it onto something. I use a file folder because I always have a file folder handy. So I'm gonna transfer that onto here. And then I like to cut my appliques directly out of fabric. I'm not going to iron them on. So I'm gonna show you how to do my method for appliqueing. My first step is to get the fabric for the cats a little bit bigger than I'm going to have the applique cut and make sure you steam press it really, really flat. You want this completely, completely flat. Then decide, do I want all my cats facing right, facing left? And you're gonna draw on the back side. So remember, if you want your cats facing this way, you're gonna to wanna to turn that over and have your pattern facing that way. I'm gonna put mine all facing this way. So I'm gonna put this on here and I'm gonna use my marking pen and of course my good glasses and I'm going to draw around the pattern. Now there's different ways of getting this on here. I like to draw right on the fabric and of course this, um, the friction pen here will come off as soon as we iron it. So I'm gonna draw all the way around and then I'm going to use a really sharp pair of Kai scissors and I'm going to cut along the line. I'm gonna cut four layers at a time. You can cut as many layers as you are comfortable with. Now every cat needs to have a little heart. We're gonna put that right down here. So I'm gonna cut hearts out of every fabric. With an applique this large, when you're cutting multiple layers, you probably wanna put a few pins in just to hold it in place while you cut. So I'm just gonna take my sharp scissors. Let's get this off of here. And I like to do it in one continuous movement. So I'm gonna go right along the lines and just keep curving. All right, there's the hearts. So we're going to trade them up. We're going to put a red heart on a blue cat and an orange heart on a purple cat, but we're gonna cut these out of every fabric that we're doing cats out of. Now I'm gonna cut the cat. So just go all the way around. Sometimes you have to stop and start cutting from the other direction. That does make it easier once in a while. Here's the cats, and I'll show you how nice they look on that grunge background. So we don't wanna put an orange cat on the orange because it just doesn't show up very well, but look at how pretty the yellow one looks really yummy. Then we'll put this bright orange cat onto some purple. So you just pick a nice bright background and alternate the cats. And I'll get the rest of the hearts cut out so that we can get a little bit more contrast there. But look at how fun that is. I have most of my cats cut out and laid out on the backgrounds. 
They're really bright and fun, and I've used a contrasting heart on the cats. Now, when I applique, I don't like to iron on the appliques. A lot of people do like that method, and that's fine. There's many ways of getting your applique attached to the background. So the method I'm gonna use is glue basting. So I'm gonna use Quilter's Choice, and this is basting glue. You can also use Elmer's glue. Both of the products, Elmer's or this, they're water soluble. They won't stay on your quilt. They wash out simply with water. You don't even need soap. But this is a good way to get it temporarily attached to the background while you applique. So this has a small hole in the top and sometimes you have to make sure that the hole is not filled with the glue. You can also rinse out the cap if you want. And so I'm simply going to put a very small amount of this right near the edge. Now the glue is clear, so I don't know if you can even see it, but I'm just going really close to the edge. And you don't have to glue it all the way around the cat, but I recommend doing it in the ears and anywhere that's really curvy. So this is just going to glue it down. And I'm doing it so close to the edge that I'm not sure my needle will even go through the glue, but this kind of basting glue will not gum up your needle. It won't make your machine go icky or anything like that. So I'm just gonna put a very narrow strip of it right near the edge. So I'm kind of dotting it. It doesn't have to be a solid line. And I'm gonna go not all the way around, but especially around the curves around the ears and around the tail. So you can experiment and see how much glue you like to use. So I'm gonna press this down and I'm gonna be sure to iron it with a dry iron before I start sewing and that will make sure that the glue is all the way dry. So I'm gonna take these pins out, put this glue around here, and this makes it really easy to applique but it doesn't add any stiffness the way some of the iron-on um, applications can. I've got all of my cats glued onto the background. Here's a nice bright one, really fun. Now before we uh, stitch around the edge, we need some sort of stabilizer underneath here. There's products, here's a Pellon product, it's called Stitch and Tear, and it's just meant to put underneath your applique, so that your stitch will stay nice and stable and it won't crumple up. There's also water soluble products. So I got two different ones here. So these you can put underneath your applique. They don't seem to be quite as stiff, but they work really well. And these will completely uh, dissipate and disappear when you get them wet. So there's some different thicknesses of this product here. I have always just used paper under my appliques. I always have paper around. I don't always have those products around. So we have a lot of newsprint here, it's fairly thin, but it works really well and it tears away easily. So I've just cut up some of this newsprint here and that's what I'm gonna use for my stabilizer. To do the applique work, I'm gonna be working on this little Singer patchwork sewing machine. This is not my normal sewing machine. I'm used to working on the commercial machine, but my commercial single needle does not have any sort of zigzag or any decorative stitches at all. This has a whole bunch of decorative stitches. So I'm gonna use a blanket stitch, which is number 18 here. So there's a couple adjustments we need to make to the, to the machine so we can get a nice stitch. So I need to adjust my stitch width and my stitch length. So I've got little guys here. I'm going to do three and a half. I'm going to do 1.8. So let me show you what the stitch looks like. So let me show you what the stitch looks like here. We've got stitches going over and then we've got it stitching right along the outside edge of our cut edge here. And that's how you want to stitch it. You want this long stitch right on the outside here. So this is the width I'm going to use and it's pretty tight because we did not fuse our fabric on, we just barely glued it around the edges. 
Thanks for watching part one of our tutorial on how to make the Cafe Cats quilt. Now be sure to check back for part two so we can all finish up our quilts.